Um, so, okay, regenerative agriculture is about strategies that solve climate change and do other good things too, right? So, okay, it's sequestering carbon, it's making food and other stuff we can use. It's providing benefits to the agroecosystem like nitrogen fixation or, or what have you. Ecosystem services. In the place I've been working in Mexico a bunch, it's a cloud forest area that's 97% deforested. And they're trying to build a tree-based agriculture so that they can uh, reforest this area, which is a key uh, recharge area for water for a massive, massive amount of Mexico, most of which is very dry. So that when you deforest it, you get rain and then um, huge floods and then drought. But when it's forested, you get nice steady flow of rivers all year long. So that's what they're trying to, to reestablish, and they need trees that can make food in order to do that. They need a perennial food system that's a multi-story system in order to be able to make a living while keeping their, their water running for their country. So Mexico's been putting a lot of money, almost everybody's ahead of the U.S. on these issues. Uh, stabilizing slopes, moderating these flood and drought cycles. The ones I really like are food sovereignty. I think this kind of strategy can have a real contribution to food sovereignty and what I call tree-based decentralized democracy or tree-based Jeffersonian democracy, meaning just that, decentralized, numerous communities, relatively autonomous, federated, making it happen. Yeah. Green energy, local food production, a vision that I think a lot of us here really share in that group. For me, Adam Murray Bookchin, to go even a generation before people ask, say nice things about before. So, okay, so what, um, what exactly is the, is the carbon math? I've started running some of these numbers. I'm learning my way. I'm not a math guy. I'm a botanist, but I'm learning my way around this. So, okay, we need to sequester these 200 billion tons or more. More would be great. Um, Agroforestry, the numbers vary wildly on what people say it can sequester between 9 and 228 tons per hectare. So that's a big range. I went ahead and took a conservative estimate at 25 tons per hectare, which I think around here could be much higher. Um, and uh, if you took just the world's land that's considered farmland, that's considered sloping, which is actually 45% of the world's arable land, uh, that would sequester 17 billion tons, almost 10% of what needs to be done. And sloping land shouldn't have annuals on it anyway without strips of trees every so on and stuff, right? And even if you just took the steep slopes, which is over 30%, which is 9% of the world's arable land, which I absolutely cannot believe, except I've seen it, um, that would be three and a half billion tons, which is a third of the 10 billion tons we're emitting every year. So not insignificant, but um, clearly this needs to be part of a larger program that involves stopping the emissions, sequestering more carbon, setting up clean energy, et cetera. So okay, um, I'm not gonna read through these, but agriculture, conventional agriculture, um, has a number of problem areas that cause climate change. And if you look at this list, almost everything on there is something the organic community has been defining itself in opposition to for 30 years. So thanks, <laughs> appreciate that. Um, really, it's quite remarkable when I made that list. I was like, oh yeah, okay, great. Um, and, and I think local organic is out in front of anybody on these ideas. I think it's a massive part of the solution. Um, and I think there are some areas where we could improve even further. So I'm gonna talk about some of those tonight. One is to reduce the amount of tillage. We all know tillage isn't great. We do it because we gotta do it. We don't wanna use herbicide, I understand. Uh, I like annuals, I grow lots of annuals at home. I've managed to farm the grew annuals. I'm not here to criticize anybody's practices. I like tomatoes, I like wheat, I eat bread every day, right? Um, but I think we can reduce tillage. I think we can reduce fossil fuel equipment, and I think we can increase the perennial elements, particularly. You're not surprised to hear me that say that if you know me, because I'm sort of a nerd for perennial stuff. Um, so why perennials? Well, they sequester carbon. In their above ground woody parts, if they're trees or shrubs or woody vines, in their below ground biomass, um, and they, in a no-till perennial system, it's the ideal recipe for building organic matter in the soil and holding it there in place for the long term. Perennials are also much more resilient in the face of crazy weather than annuals. They won't wash away unless it's a really big flood. Um, they're not, they don't hold up too well to tornadoes, though. 
Um, and, and perennials have great power for restoring degraded land. And one of the big things people have identified for climate change is restoring degraded land, bringing those soils back into a healthy organic matter level is a great way to sequester carbon. Uh, the picture on the right there, the left, the tiny little white squiggle is an annual wheat plant, and the right is a perennial grain. You can see the root system is rather more substantial on the perennial plant. Uh, the roots themselves count as carbon and the soil they hold in place and they build also counts as carbon.